Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Badass Unscripted. Guys, you know we're live in like 75 countries right now? That is amazing. I want to thank you so much for your ongoing and undying support. For those of you who are reaching out on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, everywhere, thank you, thank you, thank you. Don't forget, if you appreciate having this daily inspiration, go on over to badassagile.com, sign yourself up for some sample pages from my book, Field Notes for the Agile Leader, and from my weekly video inspirations delivered straight to your inbox, just for you. You can't get these anywhere else. One of my favorite sayings is find a way or make a way. The most powerful question, I think, in the English language is what else might work? Meaning at the moment when we feel like this isn't doable, there's no way out. You keep digging. You don't quit. You keep looking until you find a solution. The solution that arises is so powerful. I was having a discussion this week about what happens when technology runs the product. So if clean, sustainable architecture always dictates what we deliver to the customer and when, we could potentially have a problem. Because there will be times, a lot of times, when the customer wants something that structurally we're not ready for yet. And the question is, is it acceptable then to build something that's not perfect because it's not enterprise architecture compliant, because the architecture that you use is not sustainable, won't scale to a large number of users? Is it acceptable to find a way to deliver that customer value, even if it is in breach of our architectural principles? And the answer has to be yes. Now, it has to be a responsible yes. We understand that by delivering in that way, we incur a technical debt that we have to pay back at some point to go back and fix or create the supporting structures so that we're properly aligned with and in lockstep with the well-defined, well-known architectural principles and practices. So what are the advantages of effectively building it wrong? Well, number one, it lets you find a way or make a way where all things seem impossible, where there's a requirement that someone wants to get to the market and there's no foreseeable way to do it in less than 12 weeks. By creating a makeshift architecture or a temporary patch or fix, if you can get it out to the marketplace in a week or two instead, that's massive competitive advantage. That may be all you need to keep your competitors from getting to the market before you. But sometimes a solution like that, which I call a jerry-rigged or a staples and paper clips solution, meaning that architecturally it's not graceful, but it gets the job done. Sometimes that allows us to put something in front of the customer, albeit in a controlled beta or low risk environment. So low volume of users, low exposure to failure, low exposure to crucial customer data, crucial processes, and so on, so that at least we can show people what we intend to build and validate that either an approach or a solution is actually right. It'll actually work. But you know something else? Sometimes when you bend or break architecture like that, you create a way for new architectures. You create an opportunity to either have a completely new way of building things, to revise and refine the architecture for faster delivery. And sometimes it's perfectly okay to have a lightweight method and then the heavy duty method. The lightweight method is for ones where, you know, the quality or the scalability or the volume of users or the durability of the thing is not your first priority. I'll give you an example, a simple one. When I record podcasts, I have two setups. I have the big setup, with the good mics that are super sensitive and require that the fridge is off, the air conditioning's not running, and that nothing in the house is moving. And then the podcast takes tons of editing to remove extraneous noises and breaths so that it sounds perfect, perfect, perfect. But then when I need to knock one off really quickly, I have this microphone set up in my den and I fully accept that I'm going to leave my breaths in, that a phone's going to go off somewhere, but because I have background music playing throughout, you, don't, you guys don't hear them. Two totally different architectures. The, the second one lets me bring stuff to market so quickly it's ridiculous. I can record this podcast and have it published in like 10 to 15 minutes. So when we say find a way or make a way, what we're referring to is literally it's breaking the rules. And you might say, well, we don't want to break rules here. If you want to continue doing things the way you've always done them, you're going to get about the same results that you've been getting so far. 
The thinking that got you where you are today is not going to get you where you want to go. You have to change the way you approach experimentation, risk, and failure, and be willing to make a way where it had otherwise seemed impossible given all of the customary constraints and customary ideologies that are holding you back. As always, the easiest way to spread this kind of thinking is to find a place with willing minds and projects that fit. So a project that fits is going to be low risk, low exposure to, heavy loss, reputational damage or financial damage, penalties, fines or lawsuits. Start in easy places and build into the culture, the mindset and practice of finding a way or making a way. And let me know how it goes for you. Everybody, thank you for being true believers. I love you all, and I'll see you next time. Until then, stay badass.